Hello and welcome to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video series I'm demonstrating how you can host an email server on a Raspberry Pi with the traffic passing through your home router. The idea being that if you have a router with admin access and you have a Raspberry Pi, you have all of the technology you need to host your own website and your own email server completely for free at home. In this video series, I'll also be showing how to ensure that the emails you send from your Raspberry Pi end up in your recipient's inbox and not in their spam box. This is a particularly challenging thing to get right, so I go through that extensively. I also want to mention before we get going that this video series is part of a larger video series covering how to host a website as well as an email server and how to properly set up a fully featured continuous integration environment for development on a Raspberry Pi. The reason I'm mentioning this is because the first part of the video series is setting up a WordPress website on the Raspberry Pi. And that covers some important prerequisites for this video series. For example, I show how to set up the necessary development environment that makes life a lot easier when you're working on your Pi. I show how to set up the security for your Pi so you can open it up to the world. And we also show how to do that through a router. I introduce Cloudflare for our DNS needs. So it's, it's probably worth, and there are many other things, it's probably worth checking that out uh, before you do this series. You don't have to, but it might make your life easier because I'm going to make some assumptions going through this video series now that you at least know how to use Cloudflare. You're, you've already got a Raspberry Pi that's open to the world. You can SSH into it with an alias. Um, you know, you know how to use Visual Studio Code to SSH into the Pi so you can use it as a text editor, things like that. So it may be useful for you to go and have a look first, but you don't have to. Anyway, let's get going. So in the last video, I showed this slide, so I won't dwell on it for more than a minute at most. But what I want to show here is there are a lot of components. And in this video, we're going to focus on two of them in particular. One of them is the actual email server itself, which we're going to get installed called Postfix. And the other one is the mail storage format called MailDeer, which we're also going to set up for the main user on our Raspberry Pi. So I just want to very briefly, before we go to the desktop, talk about uh, what, what we're using and why. So for the SMTP server, I adopted Postfix. And the main reason is it's very popular. According to Wikipedia, 34% of publicly reachable mail servers run Postfix. So it's a fair bet this is a good place to start if you want to run your own email server. For the directory structure, I chose MailDeer for the exact same reason. It's highly popular. So again, it's a safe bet to use. Now, Postfix, a little bit about Postfix, it's an open source email server for sending and receiving emails, and you can install it on Linux-based systems. Postfix is an SMTP server, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it's a standard for email transmission. So in short, Postfix is the email server. It's the part of the system responsible for managing the sending and receiving of email messages. Okay, that's all done, that's the introduction. There is one last thing I want to mention before we get over to the desktop though. And that is that uh, it would have helped me when I did this a while back if I'd known this fact when I first started going. So I just want to uh, let you know about something that I would have found useful. And that is that an email server using Postfix and MailDeer will adopt the existing user account system on your Raspberry Pi for its email accounts. So by that I mean, once you're up and running and you've got your email server operational, to create a new email account, you have to create a new user on the Pi. For example, my domain is single-entity.com. So if I wanted to create a new email account called info at single-entity.com, I would have to create a new user on the Pi called info. And in info's home directory, I would then have to create the mail dear directory structure where the emails for that user will be stored. Okay, so with that now explained, let's head over to the desktop and let's get started. Okay, here we are on my desktop. I'm in my PowerShell as I'm using Windows as a development environment. Uh, I'm going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi using my Pi alias. This was set up in the previous video series on hosting a WordPress website. It's an alias pointing to my local IP address for my Raspberry Pi using a private key for authentication. Great, now I'm going to clear the screen. And to make sure that we're all up to date before we install anything, I'm going to update the distribution. So I'm going to type in sudo apt-get-update. 
Okay, with that done, we can now install Postfix, which is really easy. It's just sudo apt-get install Postfix. This will bring up a menu for us in a moment. There we go. Now we're going to select the default option, which is Internet Site. This will help Postfix create a initial configuration file for us that we will later edit. So I'm going to press enter on Internet Site. And now it'll ask us to enter our domain name. For me, it's single-entity.com. You can see it's already filled in. You may have to change yours here and type it in. Don't put in www at the start, just start with your domain name. So once you're happy, press enter. Okay, that's finished for me. So Postfix is installed in the etc directory. So if we navigate there just to check everything's where it should be, type in cd slash etc slash postfix. And I'm going to now type in ls to see what's inside. There we go, there are lots of files and folders. So that's installed in the right place, but let's now check that Postfix is running as a service because once installed, Postfix should run permanently in the background on our Raspberry Pi. To check that's happening, we can type in service Postfix status. And there we go. So because we can see it's active, it has a green active status, we know that Postfix is on our Raspberry Pi and it is running in the background. The next thing to do is to tell Postfix that we're going to be using the mail deer directory structure. And we do that by adding a couple of lines to the main.cf file. So you can see that here, main.cf. I prefer to use nano as a text editor. So I'm going to type in sudo nano main.cf. And I'm going to page down right to the bottom of this file. And I'm going to add two lines. The first one is home underscore mailbox space equals space mail dir forward slash and the second line and I don't know why we do this but it is in all the guides I've ever read you type in mailbox underscore command equals so with those two things done save the file okay so now I'm going to clear my screen I like to keep things nice and clear as I go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up the mail deer directory structure. And to do that, we're going to use Dovecot. Dovecot is an IMAP server. And IMAP is what allows an email client like Thunderbird or Outlook to connect to an email server. It's basically what provides the access, including the security for that access, to your inbox and your outbox and your sent items and your junk mail. So you've got all of these directories and the IMAP uh, protocol is what allows you to communicate between the client, which is like Thunderbird or Outlook, and your email server. So we need to include a IMAP server and we're going to be using Dovecot. But as I say, Dovecot's also going to allow us to set up the mail deer directory structure for us as well. So let's now install Dovecot so we can get going with that. So you type in sudo apt get install dovecot hyphen common and then dovecot hyphen imap d okay so dovecot hyphen common and dovecot hyphen imap d okay with dovecot installed it has provided us with the commands that will allow us to create the skeleton structure so let's do that let's create the skeleton structure for our mail deer directory structure so let's type in the following sudo mail dir make so sudo mail dir make dot dovecot forward slash etc slash skel that's going to be for the skeleton directory slash mail dir so that's going to create the parent directory press enter okay so with that done we can now use the up key to bring it up again and we're going to create the necessary folders that's going to store the emails. So we press up and then we're going to press forward slash. Then we're going to add a few folder names that you'll be very familiar with. So if you do the following, dot for hidden folder, drafts. Do it again. 
dot sent. Do it again, dot spam. Do it again, dot trash. Do it again, dot templates. There we go. So these are the commands we need to create our skeleton uh, male deer directory structure. We're going to, in this uh, video series, use the pi user in the first instance. So we're going to say that the user pi will have an email account. So we're going to copy this skeleton structure over to pi's home directory. So do as follows. sudo copy cp minus r etc skel mail dir and then space slash home slash pi slash. So we're going to copy that across and we're going to do it recursively. Okay, that's great. So let's just check it in there. So I'm just going to navigate to my home directory. This is the pi's home directory and press ls. So what I'm looking for is mail dir. So there it is, cd mail dir. Oh, I can't get in, why is that? So basically the user, pi, doesn't currently own the mail dir directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in sudo chown minus r pi colon pi and then dot slash mail dir. There we go. So now I should be able to navigate inside. Excellent. I'm going to go back one. And now I'm going to do the same, but with chmod to change the permissions level, which is required to be 700. So type in sudo chmod minus r 700. And then again, dot slash mail dear. There we go. Okay, so the permissions are now set appropriately for our uh, directory structure in our user's home directory. So as I mentioned in the early part of this video, uh, the users on the email, <coughs> email server can or may not have an email account. But to, but to create a new email account for your domain, you have to have a user on your server with that name. So you would have to have an info user, for example, if you wanted an info at yourdomain.com. Okay, but of course, other users on the Raspberry Pi in this case don't necessarily have to have an email account. We make them have an email account by setting it up such that they have this mail dear directory structure. So the next thing to do is to restart our postfix service. So sudo service postfix restart. I actually don't think you need sudo, but I'll use it anyway here. There we go. So now we just need to check it's working as we did previously. So I'll skip the sudo this time. Service postfix status. Excellent, it's running. So with that, this video is coming to an end. We've set up the mail dir directory uh, structure. We've created a skeleton so that we can use it again and again for more users uh, when we wish to add them to the list of email accounts. Uh, and in the meantime, we've added it just to the Pi user. We've also installed Postfix. We've made a change to its configuration file so that it knows we're using the mail deer configuration. And we've confirmed it's all running by checking that Postfix is running as a service. So we can move on from this video knowing that Postfix as an email server, an SMTP server is running as it should with the mail deer directory for the Pi user in place and ready to go. So I hope you found this useful. If you have, please do like the video and please do subscribe to my course. It's my only metric for whether anybody's actually interested. So that would be great. And I will see you in the next video.